And we're back for another episode. In this episode, we're going to be continuing the main scenario of Stormblood. And as always, hello from Mifri. So we are here in Ralga's Reach. The last episode was actually really, really interesting. So anyway, let's talk to Roban. The quest is called The Fires Fade. The haunted look in Roban's eyes speaks volumes. So see to the wounded, Mifri. If they live, help them. If not, move on. they're not they j just leave them there they could just feed the eagles so let's see sorry people want to still join the FC which is good let's see sorry hang on duty calls right so let's see what we're doing here the vendor's still fine what can we do what can we do where are they we're looking for corpses or there's one rip so mifrid lies motionless having breathed his last clenched in his fist is a small charm which you take for safekeeping. So he was already cold when I got to him. There was naught I could do. The charm must have been important. You'd best take it to Conrad. Rip. Hang on, hang on. The Chocobo better be flipping alive. I'm sick of Chocobos dying in Final Fantasy. Like, how dare you bring in talk about deaths having in heaven's sword is happening again now I do not approve it's like you know taking it out on horses they only serve mankind so they should be treated with the utmost respect so anyway it's like the beginning of um, what's it called Final Fantasy Type Zero. You see the dead, bleeding talk about. It's like, ugh. Manago, Mifrid, where are you? So let's give Mifrid's charm. A small wooden charm, Mifrid clenched in his fist as he bre breathed his last. This is. He's dead, isn't he? Mifrid was a warrior, so warrior, always thinking about others before himself. He once had an Imperial patrol chase him nigh on 20 marms so that his wounded would have time to escape. His comrades loved him for it, of course, though that only made him worry more. Did you know that he sent his men in Quarry Mill away because he thought they were fighting for him and not for the cause? Ah, uh, well, he did. The only life he was willing to risk was his own, you see. But that's exactly the kind of man who should be leader. The kind of man who deserves to survive, not an old fool who's all used up. There's no logic to it, Master Camp. There never is. Who stands, who falls? In the heat of battle, we can but do our best, as he did. Mifrid will, will be sorely missed, I. but because of his sacrifice, Many now live who otherwise would not, and they need us now more than ever. Aye, aye, uh, that they do. Forgive me, I had high hopes for him is all. So that's complete. Rest in peace. Right. Next quest, let's talk to Master Pippin. So the quest is called Bereft of Hearth and Home. Rago's Reach is no longer safe, as Pippin well knows. So our defeat was no near thing. It was total it was a total, a humiliation. We were powerless to withstand our enemy's assault. But we cannot afford to dwell on our failure. As Alphanode said, it is those who survived whom we must think of now. Ralgo's reach is no longer safe. The Imperials may have withdrawn, but they could return at any time to finish what they began. 
We dare not remain here. Those who are not fit to make the journey to Castor Moran's will need to take, uh, be taken by Chocobo Carriage. Agreed? Yep. So, good. I shall oversee preparations for the carriages. In the meantime, I would have you scour the infirmary for any supplies that might prove useful during our journey. Cool. So, let's see what we can find. Let's talk to Aurel. So, forgive me, but it is imperative that I continue preparing the medicines for the wounded. If you desire treatment, I must ask that you seek it elsewhere. So, oh, I see. In that case, you are free to search the barber and take that which you require. I would not have our people dying en route. I would assist you, but this process demands my undivided, undivided attention. Okay. Sorry, someone's saying hello. Hi. Let's just remember why we played this game. He ran away. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, get the medical supplies. <laughs> I wanted to hug the Lollafell. <laughs> okay, let's steal all the medical supplies. I can never get to hug a Lollafell, can I? Let's see how it is. Okay, so let's carry on. So we've got medical supplies. So now let's talk. Give the medical supplies to the courier. Okay. I wonder where a new home base is going to be then. So, Miss Marshall Tarrapin said that you might have something for me. Oh, sorry, Miss Marshall Tarrapin has blah, blah, blah. an assortment of potions and uh, potables that may prove invaluable in keeping the wounded alive on the journey back to Castrum Orens. So, 12 be praised. This should be put the driver's heart at ease. Tell the Vice Marshal we await his orders. So, Yishtola and the others are safely strapped in. Don't worry, I'll be by her side the entire time. Thank you, Krill. I'll walk alongside. They'll need protection in case the Garleans try anything. Hang on. You're injured too, aren't you? Shouldn't you be in one of the carriages? I'm not so frail that I can't make the trip on my own. Besides, there's still work to be done here. I'll see you at the wall when it's finished. As you wish. Then let us set forth at once. We shall move as quickly as our comrade's health allows. To Castro Morenz. I salute you. Cool. Complete. So quick quest. I think these are just EXP boosts at this point. So let's talk to Conrad. So the next quest is called Divide and Conquer. Conrad is a man uh, struggling to cope with a bitter reality. You have saved a good many of my men and I cannot thank you enough for that. But the fact remains, our forces were decimated. In this state, we'll not be mounting an assault on uh, Castellum, Velodin, or anywhere else. We need to be honest with ourselves about our prospects. But first, we need to put our affairs in order. Afterwards, I'll join you all at Castro Morenz. Understood. We will go and speak with General Alden. Okay, let's go speak to him. Oh, he's still in uh, thingy. I'm sure he'll teleport back to Castle Morens momentarily. After this, I'm going to go hug a lot of fell. We all need our lot of fells at least once per month, I guess. Maybe they should have like a monthly hug lot of fell day. Here's a random Lollafell. Let's give him a hug. Hello, random Lollafell. Uh. Anyway. Let's talk to Roban. Pippin has already departed with the wounded, has he? Good. 
we have completed our search of the Reach and the surrounding area. As far as we can tell, Xenos and his men returned straight away to Specula Imperius after quitting this place. It would seem he's lost interest in us. Which brings us to the most troubling question of all. Uh, not how he found us, but why he chose to spare our lives having done so. In war, you kill or capture your enemy. You don't leave him to fight another day. Only a fool will turn his back and walk away. But Venus is no fool. Whatever his motive, the, this is neither the time nor place to think on it. I will leave a token force to watch over the Reach. The rest will fall back to Castle Morenz. We can discuss our path forward there. Okay, so now let's go talk to Lee's in Castle Morenz. So as I say, I'm just happy that the whole drama with um, Cold Steel, for me personally, is now done. So I don't need to worry about it anymore. It's finished forever. So let's talk to Lee's. Cutscene. So Quill is with Yastola. She still hasn't woken up, but Quill says she is through the worst. Given the severity of her wound, we could have hoped for no more. Let us pray she makes a full recovery. We lost a good a lot sorry, we lost a lot of good people, didn't we? I saw it happen when that Skull's commander cut down Mithrid, a single blow, and that was it. Everything he fought for, all his hopes and dreams for the future, gone in an instant. And do you want to know the worst part? It wasn't a Garlean who did it, it was an Alamegan. God help me, if I ever... No, not now. Not while the general's waiting. Oh, Lees. Were it not for the swift actions of the Scions and the Alliance, many more would have died. You risked your lives to save ours, and for that we thank you. There is no need for thanks. We are allies, are we not? Aye, just so. Let us not dwell on this tragedy, but look to the future. The future? I'm sorry, General, but there is no future for us. We've lost too many. Gods, I can still see Mefrid with that woman standing over him. <laughs> They've ripped the heart out of his general. They've broken us. Our fight is over. Master Kemp, please. I'll always hate them with every fiber of my being. For what they took from us then and now. Our homeland, our freedom. Our bloody children. You mean the Skulls? The youths who fight for Xenos? Grania Lupi, the Black Wolf's legacy and our shame. A unit made up of children born to Alamegan dignitaries who came of age during the occupation. Sons and daughters of Gia Abania, raised to be proud citizens of the Empire with all the rights and responsibilities that entails. It'd be easy to curse them and call them traitors. But they're our children. Our flesh and blood. If the only way to forge the future we want is to cut down our own, then... Then what was it all for? Nargo? What will you say to the families of the fallen? To the mothers and the widows and the orphans? Will you tell them it was all for nothing? Listen to the girl. We dare not suffer our comrades' sacrifices to have been in vain. Now is the time to steal our resolve and press on, painful though it may be. And when Xenos comes back with his army, what then? This isn't the first time, you know. You'll be hard-pressed to find men brave or stupid enough to face him again. I still can't believe how strong he was. He humiliated us back there. The Warrior of Light included. 
Gods help us if he's next in line to the Garlean throne. Loath though I am to say it, we should not be surprised. Before succeeding Van Bailsar in Alamigo, Xenos led the Imperial Army to Doma, where he crushed the rebellion utterly. As a matter of fact, Doma remains in his charge to this day. Suffice it to say, Varus's heir is a peerless warrior and an accomplished general. The question is, how are we to contend with such a foe? We fight and we fight and we keep fighting until we win. We take the fight to Doma. I have a feeling you're about to tell us. Interesting. You are suggesting we kindle the flames of revolution in Doma once more and force Xenos to fight a war on two fronts? That, yes. There would need to be someone left to fight on this front by the time you got back. Look, I'm not denying the plan as promise. And I feel for our brothers and sisters in Doma, truly I do. But I fear we lack the strength to see it through. Have faith in your people, Master Kemp. Them and the Scions. Hold fast, rebuild. And when all is in place, we shall defeat Xenos together. If you're going to Doma, I'm coming too. I want to help our friends there. And make sure nothing like this ever happens again. Give us the time we need, and we will give you something far greater. Very well. For all you have done for us, we will fight on. But be swift, comrades. Al amigo has suffered enough. Cool. Let's do this. Right, so now let's talk to Alpha Nord. So, it goes without saying, but the Scions alone have not the strength to topple a prov provincial government, here or anywhere else. I am quite certain the same can be said for the Doman Liberation Front. Nevertheless, we can but go and assess the situation for ourselves and see what can be done. Lest you doubt what good we few can accomplish, I would remain... Uh, remind you that my grandfather and his 12 disciples once journeyed to these lands to save Eorzea and her people from certain doom. Brave souls with an impossible task and Eorzea lives on. Our present mission may not be as monumental in scope but it is no less important in the multitudes um, whom we would free from imperial oppression. Whom we will free. Cool. That's complete. Next. So the next quest is called Lies, Damn Lies and Pirates. So Elise is contemplating the logistics of a journey to the Far East. Cool. So where white men go as one, there is life. And where there is life, there is cause to hope. Our grandfather believed that and so do I. But before we can forge ties with our friends in the Far East, we must first find a way to reach them. Ophard is not exactly over the river and through the woods. I am one step ahead of you, dear sister, or rather Tataru is. But before we discuss that, there is another issue I wish to address. Much as I would like it if we could all make this journey together, someone will need to remain to serve as liaison to the Alliance and the Resistance during this critical period. Moreover, as Yishtola cannot be left unattended then I should obviously remain. Very well. Issue addressed. You know, Alpha Node, it would have been quicker just to ask, and markedly less patronizing. Yes, I suppose. Uh, uh, would you be willing to look after your stolen and provide support to Aranvald and the others? Yes, Alpha Node, I would. You see? That wasn't so hard, was it? Enjoy your trip, and don't you dare return with a gift. Oh, you will not dream of it. Uh, right then, sister. Mifri, Elise, gather your things. We are for Limza Labinza. Okay. Interesting, interesting. So let's go back to Limza Labinza. Because I'm guessing we're going to... 
I'm not going to do any of these side quests until um, I do it on another class or until I need to do specific ones for a for current. So, kill. Where am I going? Uh, lies and la la la. Okay, so I need to go to the upper decks. Okay, let's run a Rooney. So we obviously have to go to the inn. Well, not the inn, the, sorry, the Adventurer's Guild. Let's go this way. Aha! Let's talk to him. No, it's a player. That's the one. Tatari should be here any moment with our ship's captain. So you're going to buy sea after all. Is my love lending you our pick of the Crimson Fleet? Uh, not exactly. You're right in as much as we will be traveling by sea. Regrettably, is not. It is simply not feasible for an airship to travel such a distance without an impossibly large fuel reserves. To say nothing of inevitability of running afoul of the Empire's aerial defenses. But then it is equally infeasible to sail an Eorzean's Alliance vessel halfway around the world without the Empire taking notice. Which leaves us the only other option. Ah, speak of the devil. So, sorry to keep you waiting. May I present you Captain uh, Carvalain of Kraken Arms? So, the Kraken Arms? Don't tell me you made a deal with pirates. Greetings and salutations, Scions. I take it from your comrade's tome that you no longer wish to proceed with our proposed arrangement. Not at all, Captain. Pray forgive my sister's out her outburst. She has ever been one to speak her mind. I, on the other hand, I am the very soul of discretion, as many well-respected uh, personages would attest. From the offices of the Admiral to the high houses of Ishgard. They're going to give us an awkward smile. So, but where was I? Oh yes, the signs of the Seventh Dawn do indeed still wish to employ your services. However, it is important that you are aware of certain extenuating circumstances. Blah, 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 blah. And intent on securing passage of the Far East, you came to us, knowing us to be the proud purveyors of said region's finest spices. Which you steal from God's fearing merchants out on the high seas. Whatever privateering the Kraken Arms may or may not engage in is strictly within the limits of the law, as set forth by our indefable keeper of the peace. More to the point, we are pragmatists. I see considerable risk in aiding your cause and negligible profit. Well, I for one think the captain has a point. The five seas can be extremely treacherous, and many a poor unfortunate soul has come to grief out of their out, so out there on the waves. Uh, why, when we were in Ishgard, I heard the tragical tale of how the heir of house Durandale vanished at sea. Even now, nearby, nearly 20 years later, the poor Count remains convinced that his son still lives and would pay a Sultan's ransom for news of his whereabouts. Wink. Ha 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 So truly a tragedy for the ages and a testament to the misfortunes that may befall us should we act without due consideration. But so long as you are prepared to abide the caprious whims of fate, I am willing to oblige you this once. That said, in light of recent rebellion, I trust that you understand that I cannot deliver you to Doma itself. I can take you only as far as Kugane in Hingashi. 
We will require time to procure sufficient provisions and make ready for departure. I humbly suggest you do the same. So she manipulated him. Cool. Let's talk to Alphanode. So suddenly all those hours Sataru passed uh, cavorting and capering at the Forgotten Night seem rather better spent, do they not? That said, I had intended to press the point more uh, Blakely, but there was something disconcerting about the pleasure Tataru took in making Captain Carvalian squirm. Cool. That's complete. Right. So the next quest is called Tales from the Far East. Alpha Node is thinking of ways you might pass the time. So I say we should heed the captain's advice and attend to our own preparations while they ready the vessel for departure. Tataru and I will procure the necessary supplies. Alise, I shall be grateful if you would use the time to brief Yuri Onje on recent developments. You may also wish to review the relevant safety procedures in the event of an emergency at sea. Um, how very prudent of you. Very well. I shall go and speak with him. What of Mifri and Lees? I would like the two of you to return to Revenant's Toll and speak with our Doman allies. I fear we know too little of their homeland, and any information they can provide would be most welcome. When we have completed our respective tasks, we will reconvene here at the ferry docks. Agreed? Sounds like a plan. Let's go, Mifri. Cute. So I now need to go to a Revenant's Toll in Mordonur. Let's do it. It's obviously a lot more players are able to progress through the story now. And hope towards getting to Kugane. Okay, here's Lee's. So, well, there we are. We'll need to talk to lots of people. So I think we should split up. I'll ask around the House of Splendors. You take the Rising Stones. I'll meet you here after. Got it? Oakley doakley. So let's speak to the Domans and Rising Stone. Oh dear, oh dear. Let's talk to Higiri. So, greetings, Mifri. What brings you to the toll this day? What? You are for Doma? Heavens, you scions have shown us naught but kindness, but never in my wildest dream did I imagine you would fight for our homeland. For 25 years we've suffered under their tyranny, and then we spied an opportunity, the Emperor's dead Garlemald in chaos. It seemed the time was ripe. Beneath our Lord's banners were we gathered, and fought to reclaim our nation. But when Xenos arrived with the 12th Legion, it was over in an instant. Cool. Next. Let's talk to Hozan. So, what is it, my friend? You look as though you have something to ask. So, that you go to join Yugiri and go Setsu in the fight fills me with joy. I forgive my exuberance you require information yes we of the Najai clan have served Doma faithfully for generations my ancestors held positions within Doma castle even now it is home to the imperial viceroy's witch and her host of men and magitech to think that what was once the shining symbol of our heritage and the seat of dear lord Kayan has become a den of Garlean dogs. Okay, next. Okay. Let's talk to Homei. What's up, Homei? You are truly planning to travel to Doma? I do not know what to say. Forgive me. I shall aid you to the best of my ability. Ours is a beautiful land nestled on the eastern coast of Ofad, along the banks of the One River. Our nation thrived proud and free until the Garleans came 25 years ago. The river was our lifeblood, free to travel and to fish, but travel was soon restricted and now the river belongs to none. 
Fair enough. So now let's talk to Lee's again in Revenant's Toll. Okay, so progressing on nicely. So, ah, there you are. Learn anything interesting? The older Romans I spoke with tried to teach me all about the Far Eastern customs and the importance of formality and politeness. I'd like to think Eorzeans can be just as stiff and stuffy as anyone. Especially Ishgardians. But anyway, did you know that they eat with sticks? It wasn't all that hard actually, but or at least that's what I thought until they told me it was holding them I was holding them wrong. And then when I spoke with the younger Domans, they just rolled their eyes and told me it was all a load of stupid old hmm? Wow, what you learned sounds a lot more useful. Unless someone invites us for dinner, of course. I hope they do. Lol, okay, let's finish this complete next quest is called not without incident so Lee thinks it is time you return to Limsa Laminza so right no point waiting around here is there we should head back to Limsa Laminza Alphano said to meet at the ferry docks I think okay let's do it so let's go back to Limsa Laminza and then let's teleport straight to the docks I like now how they've plotted out the the shipping lanes to the different areas. Okay, so let's use the A for Nat, A for Nat, and then the Arcanist Guild, because that's the closest teleport. Okay, so let's talk to Alpha Node now. So, you are returned, Mithri. I trust you learned much from our dome and friends in Revenant's Toll. I am eager to hear all, though we can uh, wait until after we have left port. We will have time enough to talk on our journey to Kugane. Our spice trading friends have completed their preparations. Assuming you have completed yours, you may inform the deckhand that we are ready to depart. Okay. Let's talk to him. So, all set, lass. I'll see you to the ship, if so. Okay, let's board the Misery. So, we're now getting ready to head to Kugane. be praised. Full sure was I that I had come too late. Rionje! Tell me you haven't come all this way just to see us off. Nay, my lady. Ere you quit these shores for eastern climes, I wished to share some words of seeming import. Look ye where the sun doth rise. See crimson embers, darkening skies. Look ye where the sun doth fall. See azure lost amidst the squall. I feel like I've heard that before. Well, that sounds suitably foreboding. Another one of your prophecies, I presume? Of far eastern origin, I. It is mine earnest hope that this ancient wisdom may serve to guide you on your journey. For what dangers lie in wait for you upon those distant shores are yet beyond my knowing. Oh, Maybe I heard it in the trailer. Gift befitting your roundabout ways. Thank you. I have more than words for you, my lady. Zip. That's a nice looking sword. It's beautiful. Is it for me? Though undeniably powerful, your ethereal blade taxeth you greatly in the wielding. Not so this rapier, which shall serve you just as well against all but the most formidable foe. Impressive. 
It feels as though it's attuned to my ether. I shall treasure it. Honored guests, say your farewells, for the moment of our parting draws nigh. A fair wind blows, and I mean to follow it. It would seem our ship is set to sail. Pray give my regards to Thancred and the others, and take care. Nice. Cool. We're getting more of a glimpse of how big the world actually is. Yours is just... It's not even 20% of the world map. Fine day, is it not? Fair winds and following seas. The misery is enjoying herself. Nevertheless, it would not do for you to spend the entirety of our voyage above deck. Let me show you to your quarters. Wow, I haven't seen this since 1.0. Under normal circumstances. Captain! You need it on deck! Something queers afoot. The winds died down, the waters went still, and all of a sudden, we were dragged off course. Dragged? By what? Can't rightly say, sir. Some of the lads are muttering about seeing things in the water. Things that shouldn't be there. Oh, for the love of... If you will excuse me a moment. Actually, might I persuade you to join me? Loath though I am to admit it, I have a bad feeling about this. Oakley dokley. Why not? Cool. Right. So where do we go? Let's talk to him. So, hmm. Odd. Most odd. Well, do you have any idea what's going on? No, as a man said, despite the absence of wind and current, the misery is somehow being pulled off course. Well, why not fire up the ceruleum engines you have hidden below? An excellent suggestion based on knowledge you should not have. Alas, our engines appear to be malfunctioning for reasons that escape my engineers at present. I'm telling you, Captain, it's Sam. Uh, things the lad saw. Things. I don't suppose I could convince you to attempt something more descriptive, an adjective, for example. Uh, superstitions and fairy tales, not more. But if you must know, the things which which he is so uh, reticent to name are the souls of deceased women, said to lure sailors to their death. 
uh, preposterous. Yes, indeed. It is neither the sea nor the weather which is responsible. Then it is probably a predatory entity of some sort. Perhaps a siren or some such. For all we know, it could be a fellow spice trader, employing magics to seize and plunder passing vessels. Regardless, we have but one recourse, to let the current uh, take us where it will and deal with whatever we find there. <laughs> nod, 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 nod. What a thoroughly pragmatic suggestion. Oh, I am beginning to like you, girl. I assure you the feeling is not mutual. Once we arrive at our destination, be it a vessel or an island or something else, Lisa and I will return with the ship to defend it in case of attack. Mifri, I believe you would be ideal choice to venture forth and deal with the cause of our troubles. Then it is settled. I know not what awaits us, but it will rue the day it reeled us in. Cool. So the Siren Song C is now accessible. Yeah. So obviously I've now unlocked the first um, story dungeon of Stormblood. So anyway guys, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching and as always, goodbye from me and goodbye from Mifri. Bye guys.